Hi, it's Jordan. Um, I have a video blog of our fertility journey, and um, I made it. My first video I made was 10 things not to say to somebody that's struggling with secondary infertility. I just kind of made that because I had watched a bunch of other people's blogs, and, and there was a lot of things not to say to someone with first infertility. Um, but so I just decided to make a secondary one. But one thing that a lot of people asked me was, well, you know, you've told us what not to say, but what do we say? Like, what is what is helpful and comforting if we have a friend that's going through the same thing? Um, so basically, this is a video um, that sh I've kind of collaborated with some other people um, that have been trying to conceive um, either their first or second or fifth child and are having trouble and so this is just kind of 10 things um, that are helpful to us. So I hope this helps you and I hope it helps you be a blessing to someone else and maybe comfort them in you know a time that's just a really hard time for them. Okay the first one is asking questions and showing concern without giving advice or trying to fix something and man it means so much to me um, when my friends ask me questions about, you know, how's that going? You know, how'd your doctor's appointment go? Um, oh, you're starting metformin. Um, you know, what are the side effects of that? Or how long do you think you'll need to be on that? Or um, so how does Clomid work? How does all that work? It just means a lot because, um, you know, I'm constantly researching and looking up all this stuff. And uh, sometimes that gets lonely because I'm just kind of processing it by myself. So being able to talk it out to someone and then ask questions just really means a lot. So definitely asking questions. Okay, so the next one is remembering big appointments um, and just texting them or calling them to let them know that you're thinking of them. And I think this is huge. Um, I had a, you know, a friend text me the other day before my surgery and was like, hey, I'm just thinking of you and praying for you. And it may seem small, but just knowing before I went into my surgery that my friend was thinking of me, man, it just meant, it meant so much to me. It, it made me feel loved and supported and um, it was just really, it was just really nice. It was really nice. So I think just letting people know, um, especially in big days. Um, I know that my friend was recently um, divorced and so I wrote down her wedding anniversary just because it hit me that that might be a hard day. But I didn't really know what to say because if it wasn't a hard day, then I didn't want to like make it a hard day. And so all I said was, hey, I'm just thinking of you today. Well, it ended up meaning a lot to her. And until I started struggling with infertility and people remembered my big days that make me sad, or anxious you know I didn't realize probably how much um, but but I think when you're worried about making someone upset by and you don't know if you should bring it up I think you should bring it up I think you should just text them and say you know I'm just thinking of you you can be vague and they'll still know what you're talking about because I mean they know what you're thinking of them about and I just think it's a powerful thing to remember big days in people's lives okay so next is inspirational and positive quotes. Um, so one thing a lot of my friends do is they tag me in positive quotes and it just means a lot. Um, I'm a really positive and happy person and recently I've kind of been down and I'm not used to that and I don't like the way that feels and I have so many awesome things you know, going on in my life and I don't like you know, feeling, feeling down. Um, and so when people tag me in positive quotes or just positive news stories or just anything positive, it's just really helpful to me. And a lot of times people send me just, you know, funny things and it just, I think positivity. Um, I know um, one of the people that's struggling with infertility said that her husband puts up like quotes, positive quotes in areas around their house. He just kind of did it to surprise her. And she, she just said it helps her. It made her feel loved that he cared enough to do it. But, I mean, just reading positive things and filling your mind with positive things is always good. And so, a lot of times, I'll just get on Pinterest and look up positive quotes just to keep positive thoughts in my head. And I try and not read a bunch of negative news stories and posts and just anything negative. I'm just trying not to... I'm trying to filter, I guess, what I'm viewing more since I'm having... Um, since I'm struggling more with being positive, I'm trying to really filter out any negative. And that's honestly really helpful when people send me funny and positive things. 
Okay, um, so asking to make a meal, you know, when someone's going through like IVF or surgeries, that's just so sweet. I mean, even if they don't take you up on it, it's just, that's just a caring thing. And I know um, recently I had surgery and um, a friend of mine who, I mean, we're not like that close, like we don't talk on a weekly or probably even monthly basis, but um, she was just like, hey girl, I made some taco soup, you know, if you want me to bring some soup by. And honestly, it just meant so much to me. I just think that's just a caring thing to want to make someone's life simpler that's going through something by just bringing a meal. And um, it may have seemed, probably felt like a small thing to her, but to me it was big. And I actually think about it on a pretty regular basis how much that it meant to me. Okay, let's see. Okay, offering to watch, um, if they have children already, asking to watch their children. Um, that is so helpful for appointments or even just like a date night, even a short date night. Um, I know sometimes that, I feel like this infertility has had some things happen that have made me and my husband like so much more close. Like things I never thought would happen that are coming up that are um, just happening that I feel like are making this a lot closer. But there's also a lot of things, um, especially with me being a little bit different than my normal self or you know, a lot of times on, I'm on medicines and I'm just like a lot less patient about stuff and sometimes probably um you know sometimes I'm way more emotional than stuff and that's not really who he married so he's trying to navigate like who I am you know when I'm on these different medicines and it's just it's kind of hard and um so it can be it can cause you know us to and sometimes we f I feel like all we're talking about is our current kid and having another kid and sometimes it's nice to just bring it back together and, um, you know, we went on a date the other day. We had two hours. So we went to Chili's and we just talked and talked and talked. And um, it was just nice. We got to really just bring it back together. We didn't, we took our cell phones away. We didn't talk about infertility. We didn't talk about our current child. We just talked about like funny stuff and fun stuff for us. And, um, you know, just having two hours together, you know, it just meant a lot and it really helped us out. I can tell a huge difference with how we've been doing, you know, since just getting some quality time together. So, I oh, also for appointments, um, it really helps um, asking, you know, hey, do you want me to ride down there with you? And, you know, then I can just, you know, sit with your kid in the car and then, you know, we can go out to lunch after or something. Uh, I know my mom does that for me sometimes and it just means a lot because, A, I'm not dreading the appointment because we're doing something fun. <laughs> and then also, um, you know, sometimes I don't really want to take um, my daughter into a fertility clinic just because it's already kind of a sad experience going to a fertility clinic. And I just know that there's a lot of people that haven't even had their first child. And I just think going to a clinic is already kind of an emotional experience. And then if you're having to watch a kid while you're in the waiting room, I just want it to be a safe place for people, I guess. So I try not to bring her unless I absolutely have to and I get stuck. But so I think that's a way that you, someone can help. Even just offering, even if they don't take you up on it. Um, and then, um, oh, this is a big one. A lot of people will just, um, they'll text me and just say, hey, I'm just thinking of you or hey, I'm praying for you. And I had a friend the other night, I think it was like, Maybe I just got it really late in the middle of the night. Maybe she had left it not that late or, or maybe, I don't know. But when I think it was just, it was at a good time and a time that um, I was already thinking of this stuff a lot. And so she just messaged me and was like, hey, I just want you to know that I'm praying for you and everything. And she left me a comment on Facebook. And um, it just took me off guard because I didn't really know, you know, you never know when people are thinking of you. And I just felt really loved and supported. And her comment just m meant a lot to me. And I... I went back a few times and read it, and um, it may have just taken her a second, but it really meant a lot to me. So I think just, you know, you don't have to say a lot. Just telling people that you're thinking for them, praying for them, really goes a long way. Okay, let's see. Okay, um, I would say being a, like, healthy living support buddy, like, if you know somebody is struggling with infertility and they're trying to, like, eat really healthy or exercise... A lot just saying like hey if you ever need a walking buddy or um, well you know are you doing how's that low-carb diet going or, or how's Weight Watchers going or, or whatever they're they're doing just how's that going and just kind of asking how it's going I think that's a nice thing um, okay one thing that I found really 
um, sweet was one of my friends um, just I had told her what I, that I had been diagnosed with PCOS and then I had um, she just like researched it and was like hey I've been researching and I just have some questions and we were just texting back and forth and talking about it but I mean it just meant so much that she had researched something that I had been diagnosed with and took cared enough to take the time to look it up and ask me questions and it was questions that I had just looked up so it was nice to talk about because I hadn't really um, verbalized anything since I'd been diagnosed with that so that kind of felt good and it just meant a lot that she cared. Okay and then the other one is just ask them what they need. If you're in a spot that you want to support someone and someone close to you just be like you know you know if you don't know and you don't want to try and figure out just say what do you need right now what what can I do um, that will help you and you know I guess some people don't always know um, but um, but sometimes just asking you know they may say I just need to get out and have some fun I'm tired of just constantly dwelling on this and thinking of this let's just let's just go to lunch or you know um, or whatever but I think sometimes just asking people what they need is just such a direct way to be a friend to someone and be good to someone okay Oh, and this one, um, this is number 10. Um, one thing that I think sweet is um, I had a friend just tell me that she thought I was brave. And um, that just meant a lot to me. And um, she just said, I just want you to know I think you're very brave. And I'm just proud of all the sacrifices that you're making and how hard you're working in order to accomplish, you know, your dream of having another child. And it may seem small, but um, it just meant a lot because we are working <laughs> really hard, you know, and cutting a lot of stuff out and taking a lot of stuff we never thought we would and um, it just really meant a lot so I hope this helps I know sometimes um, you know my my friend she she lost her son and sometimes I like go to text her or message her and then I am just like I have no idea what to say I can't imagine you know what what she's going through and I just want to fix it and help and I can't fix it um, but I try and say something and so I hope this list you know compiled maybe helps somebody helps you be there for someone that's struggling with infertility um, if you're struggling with infertility um, one thing I can say is Instagram is great there are so many women and men actually out there on fertility journeys and there's just a great support out there and um, Facebook groups there's tons of Facebook groups out there if you're trying to conceive and I've just met like a lot of great and supportive women out there and um, I've had people after my surgery that I've never met in my life messaging me, hey, how did your surgery go? You know, I just wanted to make sure you're recovering well and you're feeling well and it just meant, um, it just meant a lot to me. So if you're out there and you're wishing that you had more support um, during this time, go get some. I mean, it's out there and people, it's just great. You can lend it to other people and they can lend it to you. Um, and, and so, um, if you need anything, you know, feel free to, free to message me or comment on my YouTube channel. Um, feel free to share this video. If this is something that speaks to you or you think would be helpful to other people, um, feel free to share it. And if you want to subscribe and see how things are going as we go through our fertility journey, um, feel free to subscribe. Um, but I hope this helps someone out there and for everyone that's struggling with infertility, I'm truly sorry, and um, and we got this, and um, just get the support and the help, you know, that you need. Okay, thanks everybody.